Turn around and tell somebody something's fixing to happen. I could never explain to you, out of all the meetings that I've been in, at Fresh Oil New Wine, have I ever experienced what I experienced this week. Where two lesbians got saved. Uh, where old Southern Baptist boy, one of them King James only boy, he uh, got rebaptized one morning. He stepped in the water and he fell out in the water under the glory of God. Went to the bottom of the tank and they took three of them to get him up. Weighed about 300 pounds. Come up speaking in tongues. And he said, what am I going to do? He said, too late and there ain't nothing you can do. It doesn't happen. So, <laughs> people, let me tell you something. Wednesday. Was it Tuesday? I, I don't forget so much. We got home at 1.30 in the morning one, one morning huh. Wednesday one thirty in the morning you don't know what it's like to see God's glory among 4,000 people where you got anywhere from 1,000 people laying in the floor One thirty. to see God move among Lutherans and Presbyterians Evangelical Catholics Baptist, Methodist, Pentecostal. People is bringing the church together. God is bringing the church together. Even though that we're still going to have denominations. The little doctrinal things that separated us for long, even as this Pentecostal preacher said the other night, we need to lay those things down because it ain't but one thing that matters to the church. And that's whether or not we're being an example of Jesus Christ carrying the gospel message to a lost, lost and giant world. These other things will fall in place where God wants them to. But I'm going to tell you something. It's time for us to move to another avenue. How many times have we, you hear, did you pray God will heal you? I have. Or heal somebody around you? Now, okay, now here, your pastor's leading you somewhere else. I see you, uh-huh, uh-huh. I didn't ask you. I said, how many? Raise your hand. See, actions. Speak louder than uh-huh. Seeing it. Seeing it. How many of us have prayed for our lost family? How many? And we're still waiting. Seems like we're waiting. Anticipation. How many of you just here this morning have asthma problem? Hold your head up real high. One, two, three. Sinus, asthma, three, four. Now, no, keep your hand up. The other night, this, uh, keep your hand up. The other night, this preacher said, you go home, you get your people to raise their hands. He said, Satan has attacked our churches with sinus problems and asthma. That's what he said. Allergies. And he says, today allergies keep people out of church more than anything else does. And I'm going to be honest with you. How true that is. I've never had allergies before in my life. I got some other, something happened the other day. And I was just so embarrassed, my nose just running like a water faucet. But the healing is coming today. And this is what he said. But the only way the healing can come is for you to believe and not doubt. Believe and not doubt. Hello? Believe and not doubt. Well, I, I've had it so long and I'm just wanting God to heal me. So you talked about for having it so long. That's in the past. Today is today. Amen? Now, now I hope you get it through this message this morning. Take your Bibles and turn with me, please. And if Carl, I'm doing all I can to stay in right now. The glory is so strong. So, you're the next in line. If I go down, you take it. And I ain't playing. The glory of God is all over me. Turn me, Mark. 
chapter 5. I'm getting there. <clears throat> I want I want you to leave, leave leave that up there if you will. Just leave that there. Uh, we're familiar with, with the story here of the demonic, amen. But I want us to go back as we were on the other side of Galilee, okay? The Sea of Galilee. I want us to go back where it bad. He done healed all these people. Man, it was party time, amen? It's, it's, when God does something, it's party time, ain't it? Boy, amen? Come on, get with me just a little bit. That's what it's going to take is for you to get out of that clutter you're in and start voicing down inside, hey, I'm in agreement. I know God can do it. I know God will do it. Well, they're going to think we Pentecostal. Who cares? Amen? amen. amen. Ah! Glory! Well, that just scared me to death. They were on the other side. Jesus said, let's go to the other side. Let's go to the other side. Understand, He had already predestined where they were going. He's already predestined where we're going, but it depends on us what it's going to be like, and it depends on us what we're going to be like trying to get there. So here it was, they was out there partying, boy, they was having a good time, they was out on the sea, and they were just going across that old calm sea, and all of a sudden a storm rose. You ever been that way? Boy, it's been nice at my home, but the storm rose. Jesus was on the hinder part of the ship, the Bible says, laying on the pillow. Jesus was asleep. And they come back here, Master, Teacher, do you not care that we perish? And Jesus got, I can just imagine him getting up. Peace be still. And the winds and the waves obeyed him, and stillness come, and guess what? It was part of time again. Amen? Amen. Man, it's always a part of when everything's going smooth. Man, it's all right when everything's just going hunk of dory. But here the Bible says they come up to the shore of the Gadarene. And the Bible says when they come up to the shore that Jesus stepped out of the boat, lo and behold, there was one that met him. There was one that met him. There was one that met him. Do you hear me? Amen. Full of demons. Preacher, what are you saying? Look what he says. But when he seen Jesus, where? Afar off. off. The Bible says he did what? He ran and he worshipped him. People, how can a demon possessed body run and worship the Lord God Almighty? Hey. Why? How? No, how? We have got to come to a place in our lives that the Spirit don't lead us to worship, that God Power in us leads us to worship. We waiting on the Spirit. Lord, I'm waiting on your Spirit to come and lead me. God's waiting on us. The Bible says that, that we worship Him in what? In spirit and in truth. Not by power, not by might, says the Lord, but by what? By what? I, the Spirit. That's all I heard this week, Carl. That's all I heard this week. Spirit, 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 Spirit. And I began to realize the church ain't got enough of the Spirit. Here was, listen to this, and the Bible said just as soon as he started worshiping in the next verse there, look at that, and he cried a loud voice as, what is thou, uh, uh, you know, to do uh, with you, Jesus, Son of uh, God, the Most High God, I implore you, you know, don't torment me. See, here's the thing about it. Look at me. When you start worshiping the Lord, when you start praising the Lord, the devil can't handle it. He's going to get mad. Hello? So when you're going through your valley, start worshiping and praise the Lord. When you climb your mountain, praise the Lord, no matter what it is. Hello. Amen. 
They told me I'd have a long way to go when I got back home with this. <laughs> but I want to tell you, let me tell you why. In Jesus' name, bless your word. Amen. You may be seated. Go meet the book of Luke. We've done this so many times. Luke chapter 8 verse 43. Go get my little black Bible off my desk and turn to Luke 6. Look at this. Now a woman having a flow of blood for how many years? Twelve, Twelve years. Who had spent all her livelihood or all her money on physicians and could not be healed by any. Couldn't be healed by any. This is us. Understand this is a portrayal of us. Not just physically, but spiritually. We, you know what? I went up there. Thank you. Thank you. I went up there, but I went doing something when I went. It wasn't just to go to some kind of meeting to get away from town. People, I had to have the expectancy that God was going to do something. When you come this morning, were you expecting that God was going to do something? Look at this. Listen to this. Where are we at? Where are we at, Bubba? Glory to God. Six what? Eight. Oh, eight. Excuse me. I knew that. She came from behind and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her flow had stopped. That blood stopped, and Jesus said, Who touched me? And this is it. When all <laughs> he said, when all denied it. I don't want nobody to know I'm like that. I, ain't, I didn't do it. I didn't touch him. I didn't I didn't I didn't shout at church. I I, I didn't raise my hands. Uh uh-uh, uh I, I, I didn't do it. They doubted it. And Peter said to those with him, Master, the multitude is throwing and impressing you, and you said, Who touched you? Are you ready? The problem in the church today, there are too many people that are bumping up against God. There are too many people bumping up against God. What do you mean? Man, our church was full this morning. Boy, we just seen it happening down and there. And people look excited and people, man, but when they walk out the door and they get out there in everyday life, it's always a different story than when the devil hits them in the face, they fall down. Where's that glory at? What they've done is they went to church that day or they were at home that day and all they did was kind of bump against the Lord. He, you just bump against Him. I got me just a little bit to get me home. But Jesus asked the question, who touched me? And Peter said, what do you mean? There are people that's bumping against you everywhere. There's my, and you asked who touched you? Listen, here's where the real detail comes in. He said, somebody touched me, for I perceive that virtue has come out of me. That's the only one. Listen, people, you can get in the Spirit on the Lord on the Lord's day, and you can jump and smoke and snort and have you a good time. But listen... Getting in the Spirit, you've got to reach in and touch the Master. You've got to grab hold of the Master. You've got to grab a hold of everything of what He's doing and how He's doing it and not try to do things your way. I had a lady, lady one time laid hands on her. Won't never forget it, it, New Hope Baptist Church. And she went out like a light and she said, What in the world happened? I couldn't tell her. All I could just think was, you've just met the Master. You've just met the Master. 
But see, here's the thing about it. We pray for healing every day. Every Sunday, we pray for healing. We lay hands on people. You know what? And I think sometimes that we've got used to the fact that, oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, be healed. Here's the thing about it. We're touching Him, but we're not touching Jesus with it. Listen, look at me. God's Word does not lie. God's Word does not lie. Two or three of you believing is touching anything shall ask, and it what? It shall be done. Here was a woman that says, I don't care about the crowd. I don't care if they're bumping up against him and they're all over him. If I can but just touch the hem of his garment, if I can but just touch, if I can just touch this garment, and this is what it was talking about. This here, the tassel, this here. Do you realize this represents the names of God, the prayer, the names of God right here. If I can just touch it, if I can just touch it, I know I'll be made whole. Here's the thing about it. When you and I come to a place and a time and a point in our life that realize if we just touch God, if I just touch Him through the Holy Ghost, that I know things are going to change in my life, in my family's life. Listen, in my finances. Listen, if the Word of God says you shall prosper as your soul prospers, when your soul start prospering, you're not going to only prosper in your, your money life, but in your spiritual life, in your family life, in your job life, in everything. What God does is He takes care of everything for you. Oh, glory to God. Oh, if y'all could have just... Oh, listen to this. Go with me to, <laughs> to Joshua chapter 1. We had to, the preachers had a thing one morning. We had to do some studying. And we, they gave us these... Carl, they gave us these... Uh, original, the Greek Hebrew Bible... With, a, with, with, with all them, them, th- them words, they call them words that look like scribble to me, with them Jewish words and stuff in it. Are you, are you ready for this? The Bible says, verse 2, look at this, Moses' servant is dead. Now therefore arise and go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I have given them, given the children of Israel. Listen, here's the thing about it. I want you to get this. God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. Amen? But it's just like it is today. God has saved us, but here He brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, but He has had problems getting Egypt out of the children of Israel. They were all the time looking back. Oh, it wasn't so bad. Oh, you know, oh, the, oh it wasn't. So bad. But listen to this. He told them to get together, be strong, good courage. Verse 6 down there. He said, no man shall be able to stand before you the days of your, all the days of your life. He's talking not only to them, but us. Why? Because you and I are descendants of Abraham. You know why? We've been circumcised by the blood of Jesus Christ. We've been set in that same lineage. And listen to this. Over there. Look at uh, chapter 3. Verse 4. He told them what all to do. He talked about this three days here, that resurrection day. The officers go through the camp. He said, when you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the priests and Levites bearing it, in verse number two, or three, then you shall set out from your place and what? Go what? Everybody, go after it. Now, God is telling the church, and it has in times past, my spirit is moving. Go after it. Stop sitting still. Go after the move. Hello. Amen. That, amen. Yeah, preacher, that's it. You preaching now. Amen. Glory to God. But listen to this. Yet there shall be a space between you and it. About 2,000 cubits, which is close to a mile. Why so far away? That they could see the move, every move that God did and follow it. Now, but he said, don't come near it. That you may know the way by which you must go. See there? Listen, why? For you have not passed this way before. God, see, we talked about this not long ago. We're passing a place where we've never been before. God says it's time for us to be ready. It's time now to be ready. You're going through something today that you've never been through before. My friend, and I'm going to tell you what, it ain't going to get you sitting at home. You've got to get out and go to work. You've got to get out and start pleading the case. 
pleading the blood. It's time that we stood up. If we're going to call ourselves Christians, for God's sake, let's act like it. Amen? Because I want to go and show you something else. So the people set out, and in verse 14 over there, so it was when the people set out from their camp to cross over the Jordan that the priest bearing the Ark of the Covenant before the people and those who bore the Ark came to the Jordan and the feet of the priest that bore the Ark dipped in the edge of the waters. Listen for the listen to this. For the Jordan overflowed during his banks uh, during that time of harvest. In other words, it was flooded. It was out of bank. And when the waters which came down from upstream stood still, rose up in the heap, listen, far away at Adam... Now, it's not talking about the first Adam. Understand that. How do you know that, Brother Bubba? I looked it up in the Greek text, Hebrew text. From Adam, why? To the city beside what? Zaratan. Zaratan means one who has been pierced. That's what it means. So if it's from that second Adam, the one who has been pierced, now look what it says. All the way from glory to all the way to the Dead Sea, it opened up. That's what it says. It opened up. And the Bible says they crossed on dry ground. Now, I'm going to go ahead and tell you the rest of this. After they crossed, as they got in the middle of the Jordan River, the Bible says that the priests and the Levites, they set the, 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 the ark down. You read it. Joshua told ten men, I mean twelve men of the tribes of Israel, one man out of each tribe, to get a stone because it was there that they are going to, they're, they're going to uh, build an altar to the Lord. And they placed it there. Then Joshua told the people, it says, get ahead, go ahead. See, they went ahead of the ark. For the time before, they followed the ark. Why? It became that cloud by day that kept them cool in the heat of the day. And by night, that fire that kept them warm. Listen, no more, the manna that come from heaven and the quail and the rock that followed them that they drank water from in the wilderness. Here, listen. He said, go past it. Go past it. Now understand, this is a second generation. It wasn't the first one. Because they saw they, they, they didn't want to cross Jordan. They'd listen to the spies, so they wanted to the wilderness and all of them died. They, ain't that right, Carl? They all died and died out. Then that, I think that next chapter of it deals with, with Joshua making a, a knife of flint and circumcising all of them in order to go, go after they would cross. But then he said, and then after they had all got past, the ark came to thought. Do you realize that the glory now is all around us? The glory now is following the people. They don't need manna from heaven. They've got God. They've got the power of God. Just like you this morning. Can I tell you this? You don't need a preacher on TV to tell you that you send your 500 or or $1,000 in or this or that and he'll, you, you, God's going to bless you bountifully. You already know that. And I want you to understand something. Listen to me. Look here. Look, look, look. I believe in the seed and the harvest. The Bible says it. I believe in planting seed. I believe in planting seed in this church. Just like I said, just, you know, above your tithing and offering. I believe in that. But people are being misled, and those people are going to pay for it on TV that said, you need to, God's telling me right now that somebody out there that's going to be sending, you know, you're somebody in here right now that's going to do this right now, you know. I had a preacher come up to me one time, Carl and said, God told me to tell you. I said, strange, you didn't tell me. Oh, but I believe in prophetic words. We're going to be having a, a, a prophetic conference here before long in our church. Our church is going to be putting it, and you know, whatever God leads you, you know, it's what. Because we need you to know about the prophetic and what God does. Speaks into people's lives. But here's the thing about it. Are you tired? Or are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? It depends on you. God's glory is already there. God's strength and power is already there. It depends on you whether or not you want to rise up. But preacher, preacher, you just don't understand what I'm going through. In the way you're acting, I don't want to know. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Always remember that. You're a Christian now. You're a child of God. You're an heir to the throne. 
everything that you saw Jesus do, He said you'll do those things and even things far greater. You know what? You're getting out of the natural and getting into the supernatural. God, I, I need something. I need a touch from you. I agree. People come, Brother Bob, I'd, I'd like God to lay hands on me and pray for my healing. Amen. You remember the centurion? Remember him? No hands laid, nothing. Jesus didn't even go. He said, Lord, all you got to do is speak it. I trust you. And he said, your faith has what's done it. See, here's the thing about it. And Carl, am I wrong in this? Help me on this. Am I wrong in this? That when they come and they ask for the prayer and nothing happens, it has got to be a faith issue somewhere of really believing whether or not God's going to do it or not. I, really, I, I, I see that. I got news for you. His blessings are mine. They're yours. The healing is yours. I had somebody ask me another day. And, you know, well, how come God ain't healing you? You must be doing something wrong. Oh. <laughs> No, it ain't not that I'm doing something wrong. It ain't that I don't have faith. I believe there's a reason and purpose for everything because He does heal some people when they ask. But I'm going to tell you what. I've understood one thing that through this that I've grown. I've grown in my Lord. So right now, I ain't even hurting. I mean, I got glory all over me. <laughs> now, the devil can't stay around and understand that, you know. But see, here's the thing about it. You've got to start believing God. Let me tell you what happened. God's Word. God says He blesses those that bless Him. Amen. One night up there, I don't know, y'all may have seen it on there. I was sitting beside this uh, black lady. And, and as I was sitting there, uh, I heard her tell... Her husband, she says, oh, I wish, I wish that we had the money to get that. And it's sixty-five dollars, and God said, "Give it to her." I didn't even think. I didn't even think. Has God ever told you something, and you kind of thought about it a little bit? I didn't even think. And I went. And I said, "Here, buy those things." Oh no, so I said, "Don't take my blessing." I promise no sooner than I did that Ron Phillips upon the stage said Bubba and I started walking up and his son Ronnie walked down and said dad said to give you this that's about a hundred dollars eight take two <laughs> immediately turned right around and gave the money back do you know why I, I, I figured out Carl why because I didn't think about it. I didn't think. It's obedient. I didn't think about it. Let me ask you something. How many of you have been in service? Military service. Anybody here been in a military service? Yes. When they say attention, do you think about it? And God is saying, when I speak, listen, don't hesitate, don't think. Oh, I want the Lord to heal me. But I just, I say you messed up, but I just hope you're right then. Right then. This time. Since you come to the piano. It goes back to an old Baptist song. I guess Pentecostal too, Carl, I don't know. Assemblies or whatever. All to Jesus I surrender. All to Him I freely give. It means I keep nothing back for myself. 